Welcome. I won't to... even let you start it, bro. I won't even let you start it, dude. Honestly, right. audio cut out, so we're good. <laughs> Did it? So, okay, okay. Reverse roles. Right Brian is not the host today. Me and Dave are co-hosting, and Brian, we're actually Brian's gonna be doing all of the game analysis. Okay, get <laughs> ready. He's he watched he, all nine goals. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. In his dreams, in his freaking dreams. Pull the trigger. Cool. See, I uh, unfortunately I missed out what looked to be a fantastic, great game that these guys definitely enjoyed. Yeah, I fell asleep. I'm not gonna lie, in and out of Brian. it, but it's okay. We, I wouldn't blame you in the slightest if you started falling asleep after the second, dude. If if I was not a fan of the Leafs, I would have turned that game off. I would have just like I don't know, watched something else. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, I honestly, I, I was watching some Capitals playoffs in my dreams. It wasn't bad, <laughs> but uh, let's let's get this started. This is our game four recap of Maple Leaf series against Tampa Bay Lightning for the twenty twenty three Stanley Cup playoffs. I'm here with David. I'm here with Christian. Guys, how was your night? <laughs> uh, you know what? It was Dude. pretty quiet, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, just the hanging out in the family room, just doing nothing, you know, relaxing with the with the family. How you guys feeling? Three no. one. Oh my god! Awesome. Listen, I w- I wish I could scream at the top of my lungs. I want to I want to set the scene for both of us, like where we were, and just like because th- this is one of those games where you'll have a pretty vivid memory of where you were. Um, for me, I did. I watched with my parents, uh, and. Once it hits like overtime, my mom's out. She's actually she's been out for like like a period at this point. And even even my dad, like he's going in and out. I've got to give him like a little bit of a nudge. Like they're they're fighting, they're fighting. And so for me, it wasn't as much screaming for goals. It was just relief. It was relief. Like I would just tense up and it's going like, oh my god. It was just oh, feeling all that pressure come off. But Dave, I know you had to be more of a louder okay. name so, so give us that so listen i had no reaction to any goals until the tying goal went in yes, when the tying yes. goal went in i was like at the very least we're giving ourselves a chance in overtime here my i okay i'll i'll preface this i've been watching maple leaf hockey with my grandparents religiously like me and my whole family have since like for as long as I can remember, some of my formative memories as a hockey fan were like I think I mentioned this to the guys in the chat. It was it must have been like the 04 playoffs when the Leafs had got through the Senators, and I was in the other room playing with Thomas the Tank or something, and I just heard the whole living room erupt. Um, so those are some of my like like we've I've been watching it with them my whole life, right? Uh, the last couple of games I actually wasn't with them. So when the game started to get out of hand for the Leafs, I was like in the same spot I was for game one. And I was like, oh boy, is is the superstitions coming back? Like, are they coming back now? Turns out they didn't because holy F, that was one of the greatest Maple Leaf comebacks I think I've seen Ever like I, the only one that compares Christian is probably that Columbus series, but I it blows erased, it out of the water. I the water. erased that entire series from memory. That right start a new. Yeah, this is hands down got to be one of the best games of Maple Leaf. Not even the best game, but the most entertaining game of Maple Leaf hockey. Because we'll get into it. It certainly was not the best game of hockey from the Maple Leafs. Um. I would say the Leafs probably played over the last two games, two periods of hockey, at least two periods of hockey where they were able to out chance, out, outperform the Tampa Bay Lightnings. I would say for, for four of those six periods, the Tampa Bay Lightning just kept holding the Leafs down, almost like putting their foot on our necks. But both games, they came back. And they won it. So the re- resiliency from this team is something I haven't seen from I don't any Leaf team in my lifetime, honestly. I, I don't I can't point to you a, di- a different time where we've had this type of resiliency to come back. And Let's start see go ahead, Brian. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, it's ironic because the guy who scored the opening goal for the Bolts is a guy who's known to be resilient. I got oh, us yeah. known to step up when the time matters. It's been a little bit quiet this series, not going to lie, based on what I've seen. Obviously, I, I didn't see the first goal that he scored. 
his name is Alex Kloran, but um, saw the second one and he stepped up big. But obviously that goes out of the water. But tonight, how was the goal? How was Alex Kloran's goal? Alex Kloran's first goal. I'm at, I I I'm not to watch it back here. It feels like <laughs> it's so long remember. ago. I'm watching it right now. Yeah. I'll give you some play by play. For context for everybody, the game wrapped up maybe half an hour ago. Twenty five minutes, yes. like minimum. Right, uh, Davis. Uh, all I gotta say is Kucherov's fake slap pass. You remember uh, that? That was that was that goal. Oh, One dude, I door. saw that slap pass. I was like, oh, I had PTSD I last it, year. That is lethal. I, is there is there a single more dangerous weapon that any player possesses in this series? I don't think so. Oh, in this series, that Kucherov. No. I think no. Th- that is the single most dangerous weapon that anybody has, apart from Alexander Ovechkin's one timer. Like you yeah, know the spot, up there. Yeah. you know the spot where Alex Ovechkin is. You know where Kucherov will be, but you don't know if that shot's coming or that shot that shot fake is coming. And holy hell, does it throw defenders off? I don't blame teams. I mean, I do and I don't because you have to be prepared for it to an extent. It, to me, it's on that flip. play, yeah. To me, on that play, it looked like TJ Brody almost read it. But it just, I, th- I think it just crept around his skate. Uh, I know on the broadcast they were mentioning that that uh, both Brody and the high man, I forget who it was. I think it was the two wingers. They were kind of cheating, um, cheating that play. Is this like, on the penalty kill? This was on the penalty kill. Yeah, they were kind of cheating that uh, that uh, play, right? But yeah, yeah, Marner and Camp. It was Marner and Camp, right? Uh, that's it's just, just such such a tough tough weapon. It, honestly, yeah. if anybody's got that, like, I, I can't even say enough things about it because it's burned us too many times over the past two years, regular season and playoffs. Like, he does it very frequently, and he does it to such great effect. That's w- a, one of the biggest reasons why Tampa has been a wagon for, like, the past five years, right? Yes. What's so dangerous about it is that, like, not only can he go to Killorn back door there, but he can go to Point, he can go to Hedman, he can go to Samkos. All of them are options from that singular spot. So if you're the defending team, how do you go up against that? Do you be aggressive? Do you try and take away his space? Some teams don't because on, on the penalty kill, just looking at it, we don't because if you if you play aggressive, he'll make you look like a he'll fool. He'll make you look like a fool. You're, you are better off doing what Dave mentioned, cheating, taking away the passing options. And at least then for Sammy, if you have taken away the passing options, you're saying goalie versus shooter, what can you do? And Kucherov burned us with that in game one when it was goalie versus shooter. And here, yeah, we, we unfortunately didn't have that pass coverage. He makes us pay. Clarence scores, should mention, guy who took the penalty is Willie, and it was a bad penalty. It was a bad one. It was a basically him not knowing how to really make a hit. It, it wasn't good from him. Uh, it ends up looking like a slew foot. Don't remember which um, bolt it was on, but yeah. Not a good might start here. It was not good. Sorelli? Or maybe it was, oh, you know who it was? It was Stammer. It was them, right? Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, this is this is 10 minutes into the game, and I remember in the first commercial break, I texted Dave. I'm like, this feels like a continuation of game three. It just yeah. it just felt like the exact same thing. All the same problems. Defensemen skating in mud in our own zone. Um, wingers not doing much in terms of coverage. Uh, neutral zone. Just we were getting absolutely muffled every time we tried to break into the zone. Even strength and power play, like, oh, my God, every single power play except the final two were, were terrible. Some of the worst I've seen this season. Yeah. Probably can go back multiple years. Um, and it was just – the entries were so easy for Tampa. It was one pass in the rim. They're, they're D, like, they are mobile. They When they have the puck, they process the play and skate at the same time. So many times you catch the least defense, defenders – flat-footed in our corner after they get the puck, and they're looking for where to make the pass, you've got to be a step ahead. You have to start skating while you're deciding where to make that pass, or else you just get swarmed. It's a relentless four check, and it was relentless in that first. Another Um, one thing I also wanted to note as well, the passes, the breakout passes from the Leafs were shocking for 40 minutes, like absolutely brutal. One thing that that you'll notice when the Tampa makes when Tampa makes good breakout passes, because they're moving their feet, they receive it cleanly, cleanly, and because it feels like sometimes that the Leafs' defense are just they're being caught flat-footed. So you could say that Tampa looks like the quicker team, which they could be, right? I would say the Leafs' speed are are pretty. If we're gonna go straight line racing here, I, I would say the Leafs' foot speed 
are pretty evenly matched to the foot speed on Tampa. But when, you know, when you receive a nice crisp pass on your stick tape to tape and you're in motion, you're able to move the puck a lot cleaner, right? And that's just something that I noticed that the Leafs just for 40 minutes just were not able to do. And I, I counted on at least one hand for sure in the second period where they were the Tampa generated at least a scoring chance because of a breakout like that, right? Which, if you're the Leafs, you have to find a way to stop that. So there was a couple graphics thrown up um, in the first period, even before. I'm going to go back to that. But in the first period, or actually, this is after the first going into the second, you have the graphics shown up of time on uh, time on attack. Possession Ooh, in the Ozone. That was... It was three minutes for Tampa, 40 oh. seconds for Toronto. This is coming off of last game where they showed the graphic – in the pregame and during the first period where it was, I think 10 minutes for Tampa, three minutes for Toronto, something, something really it was, it was, it, no, it was 10 and like five. five? I think it was okay. just that high. Okay. Yeah. But it, okay. it was barely touching like five. We I were think. on pace for less than that in the, after the first, right? Like yeah. it was, it was tough. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember if there was any other penalties of uh, anything that's of significance before the surge goal. Um, I don't think so though. Brian, you were so, saying something. In regards to um, in regards to themes, always one of the big themes you said was OZT office off, offensive zone time hasn't been working yeah. out for you guys. Another theme that really hasn't been working out for you guys, but the memory's kind of erased, is conceding a goal within the last two minutes of a period. Mikhail Sergachev. Oh, you're right. Yeah, four twice. times in the series. Yeah. Four times. Well, you guys said it better than me. But specifically, I'm referring to the Mikhail Sergachev goal mm-hmm. that closed off this first period. When this goes in, what are you guys thinking? Another one? Wow. Uh, I was like, <laughs> all right, wrap it up, bring it back to Toronto, try to limit the damage, and uh, maybe we'll call it a – maybe we'll have a new series on, on Thursday because, you know, everybody just kind of got uh, – that was another Kucherov pass, was it not? Yes, it was um, – Kucherov did assist the goal. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It was just another easy entry for Kucherov. And then just an easy pass. I think it's Willie on the coverage there. Yeah. And just that was a, away. That's from right, Sergeyev. because they had the camera focused on him in the first. Uh, he had a tough first period. Let's not yeah. put it lightly. Yeah, I, I think even going into the second was when his legs started to come from underneath him. His third period was much, much, much better. But... Man, oh man, when William Nylander is not skating, is not focused, he can be a liability. It's uh, that's a uh, that is our X factor right there, right, Christian? You said it before in your in our preview. You were like, William Nylander is the X factor, right? 40 goal scorer. He is the man that Tampa cannot account for in terms of talent right now, right? Uh, in terms of at least goal scoring talent, right? Just going man for man. Man for man, right? Whew. I I know William Nylander is n- like not like that. He is not like what your uncle says to be as the soft Swede, right? He is much, much better than that, but he was not doing himself any favors for at least 30 minutes, the, the first 30 minutes of today's game. What do you think his time when I saw this for the game? If you just had to take a guess. 17. <laughs> 14 minutes uh, so okay. listen well, I, I listen K- keith obviously has a handle on what's going on not that we'd expect he doesn't have any idea but that's um one second less than matthew nice and you could maybe argue that nice deserved more time right um yeah just just something i noticed there uh so we're have, down to all did have three assists tonight though three assists and a minus one so looks so like he made up for it yeah i think but, a couple yeah. of them are on the power play though right so yes but you know what yes. it was when we need the special teams to win, right? Yeah. That we've talked about that how crucial that is, and for half the game, the power play sucked. But when it mattered, the yeah, was the one who put the shot on for the Matthew tip. Um, even going back to the last game, we talked about Nylander throwing on the the puck for the game time goal for O'Reilly, right? So, uh, you know what? Uh, he, he picked up his three points. I'm sure that'll comfort him a little bit and take some of the pressure off him to be the Willie Nylander we know going forward right so that is a little bit of a silver lining there um we leave the period down 2-0 and yeah just it's all the it's all the thoughts that dave mentioned runs through my head too it's like okay back to square one um same questions same story 2-2 series 
it, we're officially entering the danger zone of the series for the Leafs because as soon as there's a game six or a game seven involved, that's when, it, that's when things don't go our way. Uh, they tend yeah. not to, at least, right? Yes, yes. One guy. And you know what? For for 40 minutes tonight, uh, I would have told you that things were going exactly to, you know, exactly to that same narrative, right? But sorry, what, what were you going to say, Brian? <laughs> I was going to say something a little different is early in the second period. It looks like, it looks like to me like your third line, just based off the guy that got the assist, um, Noel Chari scores his second goal of the series to bring you guys back up to cut the lead in half. It's 2-1 now. Your third line's working pretty pretty well, you know? Oh, yeah. Ryan O'Reilly and I, old Noel Chari and I believe Nye's on that line too, correct? Yeah, it was a bit of a blender um, going into the second period just because of how poorly we played. But yeah, it just for the most part, that's been the line. O'Reilly was out here for this goal. He makes the pass, I believe, to Hall and throws it on net. Good things happen when you throw it on net. And there was a lot of points in this game where I was just screaming on my TV. Just throw it on. Just throw it on. We were a little bit hesitant with the puck from our blue line, but Hall made a quick decision there. Didn't hesitate. Good things happen. No Achari, he gets to the dirty areas. Um, and the goal he scored last game was probably one of the nicest, or definitely the nicest goal we've seen his in his career. Goal. This yeah. is more what we're used to seeing from him and what we expected from him. So, yeah, it's like got if us he's off not, the schneid, man. If, you, if Achari's not tipping in high or breaking somebody's body in the corner, he's like in like literally two feet in front of the net trying to just jam one home right so he's got to be like five foot ten but he's probably like five feet ten inches wide right like that guy's just like wide oh yeah he's hilarious and he plays like he's he's got that he's got that plane bigger than he is uh personality trait right where he may be five ten, but he plays like he's ten five when he's out there, right? He's got He'll... such a low center of gravity. Like <laughs> when do you see him fall? He doesn't fall, man. Not a... yeah, yeah. Unless unless somebody's like willingly taking him yeah. out from like yeah. willingly taking out his knees, he's he's like he's like a little pit bull out there, like a little bulldog, yeah, basically, right? Yeah, I, I threw in our chat. I said Ryan O'Reilly is the world's greatest firefighter because it feels no, like yeah. uh, so many games now. It's him that's starting it, right? When we feel like we're in peril. Ryan O'Reilly's there to save the day. Game one, down 3-0. Who scores the power play goal? Ryan O'Reilly. Showing signs of life. There was the close-up cam on him when Nylander scored. I'm just like, that's the guy. That's the guy right there. Uh, Game three, he scores the tie-in goal. You know the story there. Game four, he's the guy. Game-winning assist as well on the OT winner. Yeah. Just uh, so much stuff, man. So Hans might win it for a reason, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, he's been there. Definitely shows experience. Another player that shows that has lots of play, playoff experience gets his first of the series. Steven Stamkos scores off an assist from Victor Hedman. His first goal of, of the series, which is kind of surprising just because everybody's used to stammer, hammering thunderbolts unironically into the net. This makes the score 3 1. Sucks the life out of the building a bit for you guys, huh? Takes well, it away. It, it sucks the life out of the team. But it rejuvenates that building. That building was electric. When oh, captain, for them. Yeah, it's their way. When Sorry, your captain you were away. scores, yeah. When your captain scores, you know, after sort of, not even like a, I wouldn't call it a backbreaking goal that Achari scored because, you know, it was against the run of play, I would say, right? But then you have your captain, you know, I don't even know how, like the fact that that puck got through, it got, it got through like, Two sk- like two sets of the uh, legs, right? Yeah. Right off of Stammer's like top tip of, of his toe. toe. Yeah. And it and into the roof of the net. Like I, I saw that go in and I was like, oh, you know what? Like that must have been a nice tip. I thought, you know, maybe he got his stick on it. And then after on the replay, it it went in off his skate. And my grandmother's like, is that not a kick? He kicked it and he kicked it out. I'm like, he had his foot on the ground, on the ice the entire time. No, no. I'm sorry to do that to you, <laughs> but that's a, that's a clean goal. And that's that's a captain's goal, right? Yes. Not many players are, are going to get stuff going for them like that. But Markham's own Stevie Stammer, that's something he'll do to you. And another I'm just watching the replay on that one. And I'm trying to figure out, like, is there anywhere to throw blame? I got I got nothing. Maybe TJ Brody. I'm looking at it. Stan, uh, Samson stops the puck behind the the net. He rims it around the boards. 
Brody goes to try and hug Words and, and get the puck. It ends up getting by him, goes over his shoulder, it looks like, and that's what basically gets this going. But just the actual play where the goal is scored, I don't know. I think this is just a throw your hands up and say, whoop de doo good to be lucky, lucky to be good, just like the Leafs have been uh, in, the, in the earlier games, right? Like, I've, I, got, I got not too much analysis on this one. <laughs> And continuing yeah. with the theme of conceding a goal within the last two minutes, Alex Kloran pots home his second of the yeah. series, second of the game, makes it 4-1. This, this was an exception with this one. This yeah. was the backbreaker. Uh, so I said it off of camera, off camera. I've been trying so hard to defend Justin Hall to all of my friends in the group chats, all the people I know who are Leaf fans. And man, oh man, was he making it hard for me tonight. Uh he had me fighting for my life in the group chats. I'll I'll, I'll leave it at that. Not going to name names. All my friends, like, you know what? You could, you know, give me the smoke now, I guess. But at the time, I was, I, I legitimately turned off my phone. I was like, I can't deal with this right now. One thing, like, on rewatch of that goal, of 100%, do I feel like Justin Hall could have tied up his man better, cleared out the front of the net better? A hundred percent. There's always something that if it, once a goal goes in, there's always something more that you could be doing 99% of the time. Right. But I also feel some blame should be put on Ilya Samsonov. And I'm not even going to say it just because like that could have been any leaf defenseman out on the ice there. It's not just because I was fighting for my life in the group chat, but it does look like Sammy what lost his posts a little bit. What a rip from Alex Kalorn. What was the stat heading into tonight? It was 20 over 29 games. in his last, Ooh. yeah, last 29 playoff games, no goals. And dude, I, I threw that in our chat. I'm like, guys, look at this huge stat from the broadcast pregame. That's crazy. And Dave's like, what, Dave, what'd you say? Uh, dude, I was like, oh, dude, he's got, well, you put in two stats, right? So it was, yeah. it was Kalorn for 29, and then Nick oh, Paul also had not scored in 29 straight consecutive in games. General. In yeah. general, right? So I was like, okay, book it now. Both of those guys are scoring. There's your I goal mean, scores. Kalorn Kal- did his share right away. And as soon as he scored, like, it was an instant message in the chat. Uh, man, if you hit Kalorn two goals tonight, you would have been, you would be a rich person, man or woman, right now. Woo! We well, it's just so funny, man. It's it's just funny how like ironic this the CBC pregame producers could have thrown up that graphic in any of the previous thrown up three games last game. Yeah, and, and, and listen, maybe I'm blind. Maybe they have. Maybe this has been an ongoing thing. I don't think it has been though, right? I ha- I had it's not heard funny how things work. I had not heard that stat until tonight. Uh, tonight, tonight. Yeah. I could have sworn he scored against us though. Would that have been? 29 games or was he held scoreless last year he had to have been i don't think 20 no i don't think they played 29 games between our series and yeah i don't i don't know unless he scored maybe he scored game one of the series last year i I still don't even think that that hits 29 games so he must have not scored at all last year which is surprising because you know oh yeah that's right he didn't he didn't score they said on the broadcast as well he went over the whole playoffs I mean, okay, so Alex Kalorn is the is one of those types of guys where if he's not scoring, he's producing in other ways. I, I bet yes, you he'd had 100%. he had some points. It's not like he took a huge goose egg the entire playoffs. I, I could remember that he probably had a couple of points against us. Um outside of the but, goals he scored. He had a huge takeaway from uh Yarn Croak in the first period too, right? Yeah. He's he's, he's just on the on always the in there. He is always side. there, right? If Physical when, guy, defensively responsible. It also helps that he's on that first power play with like Kucherov, and maybe he's probably like that fifth option on there, right? You've got literally the the artillery beside you. All you've got to do is just be there for a rebound, and you know maybe maybe the puck just was not just not dropping for him uh, last playoffs, but it looked like it did tonight, right? Like that's Dave. Did you see the? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, that I just want to like I'll, I'll give credit. I will always give credit where credit's due. That is a fantastic snipe from somebody who yeah. has flown a bit under the radar recently. I guess. Um, that uh, I don't know if you saw that hall stat that was floating throughout the game. Uh, um, oh, have did I see that hall stat? 
I think told you all fighting for my life. Game too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it you. started where it was like the when holds on the ace, the score is nine one Tampa yeah. Bay. It then um, became I think, 10-1. Yeah, I think it ended up 13-2 or something, man. Mm. Not going to lie. <laughs> oh, see, uh, it's just and, tough, and man. The, the, it feels like two... it hasn't been a blatant mistake, right? It's been, no, it he's been, been on the ice. He contributes to what's happening, but it has just been the Jay Gardner moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I wonder what the even strength stats are for that because their power play is lethal. That's a good point. I, I, believe, the, um, I believe the even strength, Puts it at like six or seven because because he they yeah, had like three, three yeah. or four in the first game alone, right? So, yeah, what's the pairing that you trust the most, right? What is right it? now, right now, I don't even know. I guess it's probably Riley and Shen. I think it has to be. I man. think it has right? to be right because because the one pairing I was like, oh my god, defensive shutdown extraordinaire pairing is going to be Brody and McCabe. They've kind of also not been very good either. They have had their moments. Don't get me wrong, but ooh, they're surviving. They're not thriving. They they were surviving. They have been surviving. Now, all four games, it looks like too. Yeah. So, Man. moving moving into the third, you guys are down four one. Not looking too good. Somebody scores two goals. Who is this person? And is this the biggest two goals of his career? This is so Jed far. Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nick Robertson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the turn of Nikki Bobby, baby. Oh man! Um, Listen, yeah. Man. Dave, what was our, I asked you this before we got on? Like, what is running through your head? At or actually, I think you already said. It. Like for me, four I, two. I'm, I might have said it, dude. I don't even remember what yeah. I said so far. We've been yeah. on for thirty minutes. Or so like so that. Matthew scores the first goal. It's a snipe off of a pretty passing play, and I basically don't even like say. It word even in my family room i'm just kind of stone cold staring at the tv i enjoy yeah. the goal and that's it that's that's I, kind of all i did like, i oh, had you, my man. lips pursed i was literally sitting like this just watching the tv i was like this yeah you know okay For, you know what? i think i actually have it wrong because i've got both matthew's goals this year. Four two, i turn to my dad and i say all i say is it's a game that's all i oh. said all i said I was stone cold for the second Austin goal because at first three, it's like nervous, yeah. right? So I'm just I'm not even looking back on my dad. It's just we scored. It's four three. It's a one goal game. That's it. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, yeah, like listen, th- this guy has shown that he he steps up in these in these leaf comebacks. So you go back to that um, that Columbus game. He scores the overtime yeah. winner there. Um, just maybe someone needed to tell Jim Houston that it wasn't Kasperi Kapanen, but it was it was Austin <laughs> Matthews. He got he got the one T goal there. Um, Brian, do you know that more... No, I don't. Okay, so I just thought yeah, of my head. There's the comeback in game four of the of the. Do you remember that Columbus comeback series. at all, Brian? Okay, so the Leafs were also like they were down three nothing. Legitimately, they scored three goals in three minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. it was yeah. like I like I distinctly I remember entire. that game because I, that was peak Leaf frustration for me. I was at my grandparents' house again. We were on the brink. Yeah, we were on the brink. I left my my spot on the couch, the spot that I normally sit at for 90% of the games, then went to the other room. I didn't even have that game on. There was something else I was watching. It might have been the Raptors. I think I was watching I Raptors remember playoff this. basketball. And you guys blew an OT. And then I no, hear... No, we wanted an OT. We oh, wanted okay. an OT. Yeah. I hear one Never go mind. in, my family's reacting. I hear two go in, my family's reacting. I hear three go I in, was... I'm like... I was yeah. like, God damn it. These bastards are making me do it again. I was yeah. vibrating yeah. on the couch. And then I turned it on for the overtime winner. And I hear Jim Houston go, that's Barry Kapanen. Knowing yeah. full well, I saw 34 darting across the, across the middle. I know he got, he definitely got like the two and the three mixed up. Oh. Sorry, Jim. But that what that should have been like an all time time. Yeah. call That you completely he goofed yeah it's okay goofed. though Cappy, Cappy's nope. a right-handed shot bro like that's that's the one that gets me he's, that's the also, one that gets me. he's also not six foot four yes yes <laughs> like, and i don't think we ever saw one t like that from Cappy. anyways anyways we're getting off track continuing yeah. on um i just wanted to make note the person that the second matthews goal to make it four three was off a power play in which secret agent zach bogosian took a hooking penalty for <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember that penalty, Dave. Do you remember it in your mind? I'm oh, was that, it was, a, was that not a trip on Kerfoot? 
Yes. When he got his uh, okay. his his skate stuck in, he got his stick stuck in his skates. Okay, I do I do want to mention there was a play early in the third. It was still four one. Um, a charity goes in on the four check. I don't know whose stick that it was. It might have been Ian Cole. He's on the left half wall going into the corner. Uh, he's reaching up for a puck, and as he's doing that, he literally just yanks someone's stick out of their hands. <laughs> I don't remember. Like I don't know if you remember it, Dan, but listen, if you're if you're a Tampa fan or whatever, like. I see you. That was a hundred percent a penalty, and we got so goddamn lucky for that not to be called. If there was one play where it was like, "What the hell?" It was that one. I just wanted to mention that because I know, like, yeah, you know what? In terms of like all round chippiness, this game and it, it seemed like the refs had a pretty good handle on it. I think I think it shouldn't be remiss that we mentioned that two of those temp, like two of the least power plays today, came off of. Uh, was was the tying goal not off of uh? A power play yes. where they uh, pulled correction. somebody out. Uh the the second Matthews goal was a power play goal. Yeah, that's what yeah. it was. The second Matthews goal and the the OT. The so that um, would have been yeah. That would have been Matthews the... tip off of the knee lander shot. Okay, so okay, but those weren't in the third period. So none of none of our goals oh, came I off of cut came off of the refs pulling. I know Sergachev got one, and I know Hedman. um Hedman got one. The yeah, Hedman one, honestly, like I was surprised by it because I didn't really see anything unique to what he did. But this is something the refs do. Yeah. But that's what the refs do. They say we, we need to stop this. We need to just take one of the guys and that'll if, send a message. If that is how the ref, like make it known. If that's how you are going to officiate, make it known. I, I applaud them for keeping that up the rest of the game because, you know, there wasn't that many scrums after the whistle scrums like that. Hey, Maybe a lot of those scrums in the the past two games where people were getting, you know, hot and bothered about it, maybe that would have happened if there was some, you know, maybe some more dictation from the referees beforehand saying, like, setting the tone for what will and will not be called, right? Uh, I guess... Looking at the, the Matthews goal here again, <laughs> we do... I, I, I got to give I gotta give Willie some credit here. I didn't realize that, yeah, this is him with the entry and then he drops it for Martyr and it's a quick passing play to Matthews. I think that was, like, it was a nicer goal than I remember it in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, just, well. just for caught up. We'll, I'll so, give Willie some credit. That was nice. And then I want to say four minutes later, person I yeah. think has been probably your best player this playoffs, Rogan Riley ties the game. Makes the He's game four four. There's definitely a show for him. I think there's a there's a few guys who are making their their case to be. And he's up. Playoff. There. He's definitely up there. He's probably he's probably got the case for most fans, right? He's been involved in the most. Uh, I I do also want to shout out like Matt Nice for coming Marner. Dude. I want to shout out Matt Nice. He yes, got literally I think only one or two points so far. But he has been so noticeable in three games. It's actually ridiculous. Where even like earlier this season, when Christian was like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe Matt Nyes will, we'll, we'll get to see Matt Nyes in time for like the playoffs. And, you know, I think one of your comments this year, Christian, was, you know, one of the biggest trade deadline acquisitions that the Leafs could make is not, yeah. is going to be this guy from college, right? Is going to be signing this guy after he's done the Frozen Four tourney, right? And to myself, I was like, but can you really trust a 21, 22 year old like that to just jump in and get, I've seen a lot of players get burned like that. Right. A lot of young kids coming out of college, coming and getting thrown right in. And just regular season. You know, not even specific. To not playoffs. Even the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Holy hell has he been electric. electric. This has been electric. Just, just off the top of our heads. Let's do this exercise here. Okay. Best leaf players in the series. Let, let's put goalies aside. Cause I feel like they're a thing onto okay. themselves. Well, the best player, best goalies, Leaf player. There's really yeah. only been one. Yes. The other one played yes. for 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So Just Joseph Wall, baby. So like, okay, I don't know. Yeah. More Mitch. I I want to say Mitch Marner number one because I feel like the fact he's got ten points, he's Most the engine of the team for sure. I'll, I'm gonna give him the edge on one. Okay. Anyway, I'll, okay. So I okay. Let's let's just say we'll we'll I guess we'll say one and two is Mitch and Morgan, right? Sure. I'll Good. I have it in the Second reverse tier. order. But okay. I think it's 1A, 1B, personally, right? Do we agree on our second tier, Matthews and O'Reilly? Okay. I feel like yeah. that's my second tier. I think Matthews now, right? Now that he's getting the goal scoring as well as the like the other, like the plays, like all around his game is, his game is gaming right now, right? Yeah. Uh, 
Maybe I'll put Ryan O'Reilly as me, no, me too. For, Sorry, I should have mentioned that. Oh, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe yes. those could flip flops. Yes. Flop. So that's one A, one B, two A, two B. Yes. Three. Matthew Nyes and nobody else right? is in that category. He's, he's in the tier. He, I like. I'll I'll give I'll give Tavares hedge credit for a hat yes. trick, but like okay. that's been his. <laughs> I forgot but, about but that. I know, I know, but and honestly, because outside of that game, he hasn't been the best. He's been a good bit right? quiet for sure. Yeah, and Nylander, listen, he had his three assists tonight, so we'll put him in that tier, but. Nice is in the same tier as Tavares and Elander. He's undoubtedly our best left winger. The guy has six games under his belt. Extend him now. Insane. Right. He, Extend if him Nylander, now. if we have all the conversations about Nylander is the guy that your uncle wearing sunglasses in his Ford F-150 hates and he wishes was off the team, Matt Nice is their son. Matthew right? Nice is the antithesis to what M- yes. William Nylander will be. The yes. only problem yes. Matt Nice will have is that he is not born in like Coburg or someplace oh, up north. True. Right, because he's from Phoenix, everybody's gonna be like, "Oh, but he's American." You know what I mean? But dude, if this guy, if this guy was born in Sault Ste. Marie or Coburg or Timmins, somewhere, somewhere two hours away from the center of the city, Woodstock with Muzzin, Woodstock. Yeah, I I could. We could keep going off on different names, dude. (laughs) Moosini. That's just another one that came to my mind. If he was from there, dude, he would already like the, the people would already be making a statue right now. Like there'd be a the bus on Legends Row right beside like whoever's at the end. Like that's that's how electric okay. he's been. I want I want to mention something here on that Riley triangle because I feel like we mentioned it and then we didn't even like talk about it. <laughs> um, the Leafs have been incredible off of faceoffs. How many goals have we scored off of set plays from faceoffs? Like yeah. a ton, man, a ton. <laughs> it Riley, feels like. Every goal is who won this it feels face like off? I got a chance of those goals. Uh, which one? The 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 tying goal, yeah. You know, it was, who JT. was on the I know a yarn, I know yarn crow took a face off, it might have been an OT. I think I took the OT winner, right? I think he was on the face off for that. Was he? Oh, it's, power it's, it's definitely that something that you guys have excelled in, it's something that yes. I've noticed Tampa has struggled you know in what? as well. He he wasn't Christian, but he was on before it, so he they took the they yarn took that face off. Yeah, Yarko yeah. took that face off, then they iced it, and then they came no, back again. That was Willie. That was Willie. Willie that took that Willie. face off that, yes, then when yes. they iced it? Yeah, because I, okay. I, I was doing the same thing. Willie took it, and he he lost it cleanly. Like, I don't even know yeah. if he moved his freaking stick, <laughs> I and I did. was so mad. I was, I was like, like, why the hell is Willie taking this? And, I, like, look, I love Willie. Like, I've, I've been very critical of Willie in this, in this whole pod fight. Listen, I love Willie. Ter- I don't. I don't know what the decision was there. Just because he's right-handed and he's on strong side, I mean, listen. There's got to be other factors that go into your decision there. And then, I, you, yeah, it's a very sense of taking it. I'll tell you what. Um, Morgan Riley goal sent the game to OT in between third period and OT. There's a little break, so thought yeah. we were gonna go on a little break. We we'll should right we back. should digress a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, we are back from a little break. I interrupted you guys. You know, talking about that tying goal. You guys want to continue with that? We can, or if you guys just want to get into the OT, we can get into the OT. I do. I do want to. I do want to talk about the uh, the tying goal a little bit more. I don't blame um, you. Holy, <laughs> holy fuck, Morgan Riley! Playoff Morgan Riley is is another human being entirely. Man, this guy's seeing eye shot is something else. It looked like it did touch something on the way. I don't know what it was. It might have been a Tampa player, in which case it's still his goal. But the way this guy's been walking the line. Oh my god, it's been a like, thing of like, beauty. Dude, like a like a tightrope ballerina, what's, what's man. The, what's the uh the profession if you want to be like a is that a tightrope artist? Is that what they're I, called? I think it's I think it's just like walking a tightrope. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember there was the guy who walked over Niagara Falls? Oh dude, what's that's that guy's Morgan name? Riley. His whole family did it too. That's that's really? crazy. It was like his whole Walenda, Nick Walenda. I don't know how that that dude name. I pulled that one for the deaths. Oh dude. my god. I'm not gonna lie to you. Dude, him we, and his we family, were going him yep. and his family, I do remember the story. It's like him and his family are like the um they're like the the showmen, like they're like one of the world's best, like um it's like a legacy thing for them. Yeah, it is. It, they they've been doing it like it, it's been in their family for like a hundred years or something like that, where they've been doing crazy, ridiculous things like that. Uh but yeah, Nick Walenda and the Walenda family. Well, Morgan Walenda, you know, that was a very yeah. nice goal from him, man. Uh, I just, we can't gush enough about this guy. Oh, man. I, he really, like, it, it, to be the longest tenured Leaf and to oh. be one of the most composed guys in this game with the freaking double black eye going on. 
Yeah, what was that up with is... that? What was that from? Dude, that Dude, was the that broken was last game. Just the, just the the roughed up schnoz from the the little kerfuffle yeah. in the in last game. I thought, man. I, I, the I point thought it was a really? broken nose. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I probably is. Didn't look too good. Maybe. Can't lie. Maybe it is right. Maybe he's only breathing at like fifty percent. Maybe just like he probably went to the locker room, got it snapped back, and then came right back in. Right. So but he's he was how... gushing all game too. That last yeah. Like, so Oof. you know how it's you know how the cover art for um back to back like Drake's back to back is <laughs> is like the Jays crowd. It, we're just gonna like like Morgan Riley with the double black eyes like that's cover art right there like that's gonna be an album cover man yeah it's so gonna, that's like, gonna be my home my oh, lock screen on my home yes screen for a long that's, time dude i was gonna say 100%. like in soccer in soccer or like basketball i know when Kyrie puts on the face mask when human sung puts on the face mask they just pop oh, yeah. off maybe when riley gets the whole black guy he just pops off but yep. yeah Morgan riley scores 4-4 going into the ot is the game in the bag are you guys confident no, nope. hell no, man. You just can't have four one down. I, I am Listen. not, but I was I, like, I was genuinely. I think I was more at ease that if they lost that game, I would have come on here and just said, you know what? They, life. they I all I said after the second they period back. was get a pulse. That's all I said. Yeah, I I said that. I turned off my phone. I was like, just get a pulse. They had no pulse heading into the third period. They found their pulse. And and you know what? And they struck, and they struck gold. Man, oh man, the the jubilation I felt when I saw the puck. You know, I I I said it to these guys. I thought Matthew Nice scored. I just I want to believe it was Matthew Nice. I was I was pulling for him all game. Uh, I've been pulling for him for three games now. Uh, but it was Alex Kerfoot, another guy who has been maligned in this Leaf fan base. You know, Alex Kerfoot can't take a shot, which is fair. He, he's got a muffin. Yeah. What are you going to do? Alex Kerfoot is too scrawny. He gets pushed over. Okay, fine. That's a fair point. But when he's got his legs moving, he's faster than, I think, 99% of the players on the ice. Alex Kerfoot, net front presence today with a, another beautiful tip off of off of, off of another set play off the draw wow like we're, I, words can't even describe it I, describe it i don't even know what words i screamed and made some unholy noises yeah I, you could have casted me as a, something a from like <laughs> a, it was something dude you could have casted me in like a yeah. horror movie the, the, yeah. the thing that i screamed dude i let out the most yeah. blood curdling scream you could only ever imagine but it was blood curdling for a good reason, though. So, yin yang, I guess. Holy like I said, I, half of my family was asleep. Like I just, it was a relief thing for me. I just got up and it was just my hands were in the air, just freaking. You know, the Tavares, the when he scores, yeah. he does that sometimes. It's one of those, man. It's one of those. So this goal sets you guys up to be three one up in the series against Tampa Bay Lightning. How are you guys feeling coming back home? Listen, I, I came into our predictions for the series as someone who has Game 7 tickets and said, I don't want to go to Game 7. Leafs in 5. Leafs in 5 is on the table, boys. Well, Not to get ahead of ourselves here, but um, I think we, as a Leaf, as Leafs Nation has done many times, we've been in a spot where we have this false hope. Um, I'm just going to treat it as regular hope. I'm just going to enjoy the moment. The Leafs are up 3-1. Yeah. They've shown us something different and i know it isn't something different until the fourth win but I like listen call me crazy i'm gonna i'm gonna believe here i said leave some five minutes stick to that um this is the stranglehold that they've only had once before um and they were the ones who ended up choking despite putting on a stranglehold on the the habs 3-1 what what do we say what else christian what did we say last episode Put your foot on Tampa's neck and don't look back. The Leafs did it. It didn't look like they were. I'll be honest. I, they looked you. back for a lot of it and then they slowly turned their neck forward. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like, you know, Tamp- Tampa just they they it looked like they kind of just submitted by the end, right? Uh the the uh one quote that has come out, this is from Chris Johnson after the game. He asked Sheldon Keith. Sheldon Keith says. We attacked overtime. 
the shot attempts in that overtime period were nine to one for the Leafs. So they were stomping, man. They had their their, their boots were tied up and lay squarely on Tampa Bay's neck. The I, I I will echo the same sentiment though, Christian. Enjoy the moment, Leaf fans. You have two days to look back on the on these past two games. Not even just this past game. You have two games three. to look back. We're on a three game win streak, man. <laughs> three games, but yeah, it's a three game win streak, hundred percent. But these past two games have been like yeah. catharsis for uh, yeah. the chicken soup for the Leafs fans' soul. Right, two games where they got dominated. They were getting dummied for forty minutes at least. And they found a way to come back when when maybe in years past they shouldn't have. At the very least, Leaf fans, just enjoy these next two days. They're going to be sweet. Leafs, I, I, I do have money genuinely on Leafs in, uh, in six. I would be over the goddamn moon if it's in five. Just win the series. Just finish it. Like I said, just end it. Um, quick little stat here as we just get into like post game stuff as stats come through and all that. What's Nice's record? Um, as a leaf, perfect six and oh, six and oh. <laughs> and this is this is actually what I was gonna ask you guys next game five. Somebody can yeah. come back. Does he come back? Yeah, does Michael okay, Bunting so get subbed in? This is a hard, this is a very hard. I've been flip flopping on this one, Christian. You have a do you have a uh, an answer? I don't, not right now. I did want to just obviously mention that. I feel like this is just like, this isn't like some hard-hitting analysis here. Just on the broadcast, they talked about Nice has to have another good showing because, you know, he's got to stay in the lineup. And this guy, we went through it. Like, he's maybe number five in terms of best players in the series. He's obviously not an option to come out. Who are the options? Asselis Sorry. and Lafferty, right? Looking at the ice time here. Seven minutes for Aston Reese tonight, eight minutes for Lafferty tonight. I do think it's at least on the table. It's a really tough call. I don't really know if there's a wrong answer, at least in this moment, fresh just off of the win, maybe with some clarity tomorrow. Um, One of the factors here is something that Keith talked about for this game, mentioning that there's a couple game time decisions for the game that was just played. We don't know who they were. We don't even know if they were real because he didn't mention names. If they're real, right? Like there could be an injury, real or not, that comes up and that's what gives the door for bunting. Uh, it, my gut right now, just, it, how, how do you change the lineup? It's really tough. It is really tough to change the lineup that's won three games in a row, right? It Undefeated without bunting. I do think the best spot for bunting to come in is Game one, round two, fresh, fresh slate, new beginnings. <sighs> right, Dave? I don't know. Do, do, where are you at on this one? Okay. So Michael Bunting has been, was my pick last year as as the most surprising um, player. Like, you know, I, I, out of everybody that the Leafs signed, I thought and I hoped that he would succeed the most. And was I ever proven right, especially last season? You know, his first ever 20-goal season, 60 points. Third, I would think it was third in Calder voting. And he followed it up this year. You know, it was a bit tumultuous. I'm not going to lie to you. But he had another 20-goal season, 50 points. That's 100 points, over 100 points across two years. There are not many, many players that are doing that in the NHL. But the caveat is... What he did in in game one got him too rattled to to come back for the rest of this series. There there is no way. Here's the thing: if Matthew Nyes is not coming out, which was his like for like replacement, and you're gonna take out somebody like Zach Aston Reese who put in seven minutes, I think tonight. Do you want Michael Bunting playing seven minutes? Is that really a good use of his? skill set i'd rather have zach aston reese there he is adequate to be the fourth line grinder he has he's been he's playing got the role a goal. all season he's got a goal this playoffs michael bunting yeah. lost his head and he's been out for three games i'm i'm trusting zach aston reese in those depth dirty grimy areas 
than I am Michael Bunting because I don't have the guarantee that Michael Bunting will lose his head. And I've been a Michael Bunting fan. I've, I'm prefacing that by saying that I've been a Michael Bunting fan. There's been so many people who have turned against Michael Bunting over the past year. And for good reason. He has done things that has gotten under Leaf fan skin. And I think that this last incident is almost unforgivable. If we make it past the first round, which I'm hoping we do in game five, and, you know, we have to play the Boston Bruins probably most likely in the second round, you know who Boston's going to be going going after. But if it's, if it's another one of those situations where it's Michael Bunting in the first game and, and then you maybe take out Zach Aston Reese, whatever, it, it should be Matthew Nice that's coming out of the lineup. I think he's well-earned that third, that third line second line and first line left winger spot. He can play wherever, in my opinion, right now. The only other replacement is, are you going to take out, like, I don't know, Alex Kerfoot maybe? But they like Kerfoot too much. Kerfoot is Keith's son, right? Yeah. yeah. And he's yeah. also dependable too. I depend on yes. Alex Kerfoot. He has not done anything against, okay, granted, his offensive metrics, whatever, you could say whatever against him. He scored tonight, so that's a plus. A pretty big goal. Yeah. He excels Great. in a lot of the areas that we haven't in this series, and Tampa has zone entries and four check. Yeah. Right? What you talked about just straight line speed, guy can get after the puck. Too much value in that. Too yep. much value. And again, Bunting kind of replicates some of those things. He doesn't have the straight line speed of Alex Kerfoot and the discipline no. of Alex Kerfoot. No. Um, yeah. Listen, whenever Bunting does come back in, I think the formula for him, what no matter what line he plays on, is you say Bunting, just not disregard your teammates, but play Michael Bunting's game. Just be Michael Bunting. Don't rely on teammates for certain plays. Just you've got the puck, get over center. I know this sounds stupid, but just dump it, chase for it, do do your job. That is it. Play within yourself. Play within yourself. Yeah. That that's so got to be a pro- simplified game. The problem with that though is it 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 almost feels like the problems. I, I think that the problems, if he does come back on the ice, he's learned from his mistake, right? You would hope. I would expect he has learned from his mistake. But he can't be making stupid, egregious errors like he did by headhunting, right? But the problem will be after the whistle stuff. If he's on the ice, you know whoever is on the ice. It doesn't even have to be. If it's if it's Boston around two, if it's him coming in for game game five, let's say hypothetically, you know who's – Everybody's going to be going after him. It's not just going to be the guys who you who you think. Everybody and their grandmothers are going to be. John Cooper from the bench will be going after him. That's how much of a target he has put on his on his back, right? Um, so, so Dave, you mentioned round two quite a bit. Boston a bit. Do you taste it? You taste round two yet? No, no. I no. no. You could always taste it. I could have tasted round two from the beginning. You know, when, when they went up seven, when they won seven, three, right. I, that was one win. Now we're two wins closer and it's one win away. I've tasted it too many times before game, you know, game five or whatever game, game four against Montreal game six against Tampa Bay game, game seven, seven against Boston game seven against Boston. Game seven against Boston. <laughs> I, I, it, my head was literally like, oh my God, the Leafs are going to be playing Henrik Lundqvist and the New York Rangers. This is freaking sick. That is crazy. That was my thoughts as I sat on my couch. Okay. I, whatever we time, think right, it boys? tastes like, whatever we think it tastes like, we're, have, we're incredibly it's got, mistaken. It's going to be gonna sweeter. Taste so much better when it it's actually be sweeter. Yes. It has to be yeah. sweeter. It just has to be. Yeah. I'm, I've yeah. convinced myself it has to be sweeter than whatever um, the fuck it's been for almost 10 years for 10 years actually it's been 10 years it's been 10 years i can confirm that yes the second round is sweeter third round's even better (laughs) and the final (laughs) is the best but before i close off i just want to ask you guys anything you guys want to say um shout out to luke shannon who had 10 hits tonight guy is a goddamn beast and listen luke shannon has given everything we thought he would give us as a physical presence as a bruiser as a guy who people just bounce off of him when they try to hit him. This is As another a, guy like Achari, right? Eraser. Like, dude, the eraser. The eraser. The, eraser. the passion. Uh, sensational. 
all oh, of the man. all of the many puns. puns so many Dude. puns just the the fact that he's playing with riley it's just like the the prodigal son has returned yeah. all this That's good a, stuff man that, that is such a great storyline man like right? you know the 2008 draft pick the the person who uh, leaves nation like threw all their hopes and dreams on top of probably unfairly for an 18 year old <laughs> playing with the longest tenured leaf now and the first pick of this current era but kind of misses this current era's like crop of picks by a couple of years you know riley I- wasn't a part of that that seven sorry the four one game uh and you know hats off to him because that was the original four one game left you know a lot of lasting uh effects for a lot of those guys on that team but, but dave you're right just the whole story's come full circle and it looks like it's starting a brand new chapter and i'll tell you what Thank you again for listening. I think that we're going to conclude it here. Dave, I'm sorry to cut you off. I know no, you wanted fine. to go on, but it's, we can't I go down. Shout out to Ilya Samson, up, bro. Can I at least say that? Like, oh my God. Does he have I the second worst stats in the league right now? Listen, okay. Like, the goal something <laughs> isn't a thing in this series, but I think this game That's is true. better than last game. I know we got pestered last game, but I just wanted, I had to give him a show. I thought he looked really yeah. calm tonight. Held, I know he gave he up bad goals, in. but he made huge saves. He did hold hold it in for the third yeah. and, and o- whatever, whatever came his way, OT, he, he did hold it in. Uh, yeah, no, honestly, Brian, thank you for cutting us off because we could legitimately yes. oh, yeah. do this it's a dangerous for another case. three hours. Frick, it's so true. But I'll tell you what, thank you guys for thank everybody else for listening. Uh, you can catch game five Wednesday night, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday night. night, Thursday night, Hockey Night in Canada, Fubo TV. You can catch the whole Stanley Cup playoffs on Fubo TV, actually. And shout out to NHL Shop. That's yeah, you can get your Alex Kerfoot jersey. Shout out to Razor <laughs> and shout out to Dave's TikToks. He's been coming up with pretty good stuff recently. Yeah, two of them today. Yes. And we'll see you next time.